really titled this video, The Trials and Tribulations of a Tool Freak. I've been on the quest for the ideal blowtorch for years. I'm sure some of you that are watching this video are laughing already because you've been through the same thing trying to get these old propane torches to work right. Sometimes they don't start, sometimes they go off if you hold them too close to the surface, and they just don't put out enough heat. But recently I found what I believe is the ideal blowtorch. And when used with the newer map gas, it really puts out the heat. Now, considering what you just watch, take a look at this and how easy it is to get this torch working. First time out of the box, screw in the tank, open the valve, one hit. Look at that. Let me show you a closer look at the operation of the torch. It has a piezo starter wire that goes right up into the outlet nozzle. And the starter button is located right on the back of the handle, very easy access to your thumb. And then the valve, which controls the on off of the gas and the amount of heat is located right in the center of the housing and you can rotate that easily with your thumb and finger. So watch again how easy this is. Open the valve, hit the button and you have immediate heat and it's very stable. I can, I can turn the, the valve down and get a very small flame, which is really nice when you're trying to control the heat. And then you can crank this thing out so it's really burning hot. Before I show you how I use this torch when working on Mercedes, I want to talk about safety. First off, you have to realize when using map gas that even propane, this torch is extremely hot and can cause severe burns in just a second or two. So always wear leather gloves when working with a, a blowtorch. You may say, well, you know, I'm not going to I'm just not going to touch my hand, but you never know when you can swing that arc of that torch in across your hand or your arm, and that can be very painful. Secondly, I recommend that you always wear a face shield, because when you're working in and around an engine or on a suspension where you're trying to get a, a part hot, you want to be able to prevent anything from flying up in your face that might have already heated up from the, the application of this torch. And then finally, always have a fire extinguisher by your side when you're working with a torch. And finally, I do not recommend that you do some of the things I'm going to show you while working on a gasoline engine. Diesels are a lot safer than gas. And anytime you're working on a gas engine, always consider the source of the fuel and where it is before you ever apply any heat with this type of torch. Using this torch to apply heat can really aid in the removal of stubborn bolts, nuts, and other fasteners on an old Mercedes. It's important to understand the principle behind the application of this heat. Remember, when you apply heat to steel or aluminum, that metal will expand. I'm currently taking apart an old 617 turbo diesel engine, and I'm going to show you some of the places where I've used heat to help in the disassembly of this unit. I used heat to successfully remove the flywheel from this turbo diesel engine, and the heat really helped in breaking loose these stretch bolts. These stretch bolts are on very tight, and if you try to get them off with the wrong procedure, you can round them off and in severe cases, like this bolt here, it's so badly rounded off that the mechanic had to use a chisel in order to break this bolt free from the crankshaft. So by using a little heat and the proper 12-point socket, you can get on each one of these stretch, stretch bolts and loosen them up without damaging the fasteners. In this particular application, I decided to use a temperature gauge. This is an infrared Fahrenheit gauge that allows me to see the temperature of each of these bolts before I remove them. You don't want too much heat. If you get too much heat, you can damage the bolts. Or if you're not going to overhaul the engine, you can overheat the rear seal. So I recommend using some sort of temperature gauge to track how much heat you're applying to any given bolt or fastener before you remove it. I like to leave it around the 200 degree range. I also use heat when removing a diesel water pump. This is a problem because you have steel bolts that are threaded into an aluminum housing. And if you're not careful, you can break these bolts off and you are stuck because it is almost impossible to drill out and retap steel bolts that have broken off in aluminum. By applying heat to the aluminum only, you will expand that aluminum 
and you can work those bolts out without any damage. Also, the front counterbalance is another place where I use heat. You can get it off with a puller, but the job is a lot easier if you just apply a little heat to the counterbalancer itself before you pull it off the front of the crank. And here's a trick I use on getting that stubborn little um, ring that the front seal rides on on the front of the crank. Note in this picture that I have put a bolt through the center of the crank and I have wrapped it with a cold rag. Now the idea here is to keep the crankshaft cold. At the same time, I've applied heat to the sealing ring. And once that warms up to about 220 degrees, I can reach in there with two hook tools and pull that ring right off the end of the crank. And then in reverse, you can heat the ring up and slide it on when you're replacing it with new. The other errors on a diesel engine are the turbocharger. And I tell you without heat, you'll never be able to separate the turbocharger center section from the turbine housing. That is a must have when working on any turbocharger overhaul or repair. And finally, the dreaded pre-chambers. Those pre-chamber collar nuts are torqued at over 100 pounds and you can damage them very easily if you don't have the right tool. We do offer the right tool on our website to remove those collar nuts as well as a slide hammer to remove the pre-chamber, but applying a little heat to both the collar nut when you're removing that and also to the cylinder head just before you remove the pre-chamber itself really helps, really makes the job go easier. So that's just an overview of some of the things um, that I do when working in and around an engine. Now let me show you one other thing that I've discovered works very well with this torch. Do any of you want to guess what I'm holding here in my hand? Yes, that's right. This is a 123 chassis front fender. Have any of you ever tried to get one of these fenders off? Okay, I know you're chuckling. I remember the first time I tried, I took all the bolts out and I'm sitting there pulling on the fender, trying to get it off. And I kept thinking, wow, what's wrong here? I, maybe I forgot a bolt. And I kept looking. Finally, I found out that these fenders are glued on. And I'm convinced it's got to be some of the strongest glue ever created. Because the only way I've found to successfully get these fenders off in any amount of time is by the use of heat. In the past, I've always used my oxyacetylene torch. And when I got this new blow torch, I decided to try it on an 84 wagon. And lo and behold, guess what? That torch burnt the glue enough so I could remove the fender. And you look in this picture, you can see how you've got to get that front section, particularly around the headlight area where it's glued on the most, burning to where you can lift up on the front fender and pull it off. I've got more tips on my website on how to remove a 123 front fender if you're a club member. And in conclusion, I want to tell you I'm so impressed with this torch that I'm offering it for sale on my website.